What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our schedule preview and projected record series. Syracuse is up next. Let's look back at their schedule from last season. Uh, they got off to a good start winning four games in a row. They beat Purdue on the road. Uh, they played all four of their non-conference games right there at the beginning of the season. And then you look at the rest of the schedule. The schedule got a lot tougher after those first four games. Clemson, North Carolina, Florida State, Virginia Tech. Three of those games on the road. On the road. Three in a row, actually, on the road. And then, you know, um, we're able to split those final four games. We'll end up having a, a decent season, six and six in the regular season. But you look at the schedule in 2024, and here it is. We'll start with the non-conference. They're going to play Ohio, Holy Cross, at UNLV, and UConn. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy non-conference schedule. This is this might be the easiest non-conference schedule for any group of, or excuse me, Power Four team. This, I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. You look at the home schedule again: the three non-conference games: Georgia Tech, Stanford, Virginia Tech, and Miami. Uh, you know, not too tough of a of a home schedule there. And the road schedule: uh, NC State, Pittsburgh, Boston College, Cal. Uh, those are that's you know this is just not a very tough schedule. I mean this is one of the easier schedules I think that we've seen so far. Um, let's just go week by week. They'll play Ohio and then they'll play Georgia Tech on September 7th at home. Then they get an early bye week before playing Stanford on the 21st. I'm wondering if Stanford also gets a bye week that week and that's why Syracuse has it because Stanford is going to have to travel across the country. Uh, I, I didn't look at that, but that's probably why uh, they have that early bye week. Holy Cross on the 28th. And then it's on the road at UNLV. So how about this? Two years in a row, they're going to have three road games in a row. UNLV, NC State, and Pittsburgh. They do get a bye week after NC State. Now that'll be a weeknight game. Or no, excuse me. Pittsburgh will be a weeknight game. So they'll have uh, a bye week after NC State and then play on a Thursday night. And then have a little extra time to prepare for Virginia Tech on November 2nd. So that's interesting. Uh, again, you do have some time in between these games. But... Three road games in a row. And then, again, Virginia Tech on November 2nd. They don't have any more bye weeks after that. At Boston College on the 9th. At Cal on the 16th. UConn on the 23rd. And Miami on November 30th to close out the season. But, again, this I mean, this schedule, no Florida State, no Clemson, no Louisville. Um, I, I mean, a very easy non-conference schedule. This it, We'll do our schedule rankings. And, you know, I haven't compiled that just yet. I haven't done all the math but it's very possible that Syracuse has the easiest power four schedule and it's very very possible and if I had to guess right now I'd say they probably do um, so how about projection wise last year projection was uh, seven and five they went six and six in the regular season projection was seven and five I actually had them at five and seven I think maybe I had them losing that game to Purdue that might have been the only thing that, that would have been different there and it would have put them at five and seven. But Athlon had them at seven and five. So they finished in between the expectations. The over under was at six and a half. So that it was a very average season for Syracuse. Of course, six and six is average, but let's see what the projection looks like this year. And again, here's the scale that we use. I've explained it in all the other videos, so we're not going to go into that. Uh, we will start with the easy wins. I think you've got one Holy Cross. That's pretty much a guaranteed win. I wouldn't would be shocked if they lost that game. And I'm going to actually put Ohio, UNLV, and UConn in the blue because these are all a decent group of five teams, and I don't think Syracuse is going to be a powerhouse. So I think they're favored by at least a couple of touchdowns in these games, but I don't think they're guaranteed wins. I mean, it would be a big upset if they were to lose. But, they, you know, it, again, it wouldn't shock me if they did lose one of these games. Um, not two, but maybe one. Uh, so we're not going to count those as guaranteed wins. We're going to put them in the blue. And then we go to games in the yellow. We've got NC State and Miami, both of these games, where I think Syracuse will be about a touchdown underdog, uh, maybe in that range. And then the rest of the schedule, it's really a bunch of 50-50 games. Georgia Tech, Stanford, Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Cal. You have three of those games at home, three on the road. So, you know, if they split those games, that's three wins. And then if they win their four non-conference games, that puts them at seven and five. You still win against NC State or Miami, eight and four. Yeah, this this team could wind up being not as good as what their record suggests at the end of the season just because of how easy the schedule is. And with this schedule, you know, if, if things come together for Syracuse, I think you have to list them as a dark horse in the ACC because are there any games here where you're going to say, ah, I just don't see, there's no way they're winning that game. You know, NC State and Miami, those will be tough for them. 
But even if they lose those games, if you go 10-2, and two, that might be good enough to get to the ACC Championship. So this is definitely a Dark Horse team because of the schedule. And it's, again, a very favorable schedule. And because of that, the projection is actually 7-5. and five. So a pretty good projection for Syracuse. Uh, and that's what I just said. If they split the games, the 50-50 games, and they win the games they're supposed to win, they would wind up at 7-5. and five. So that's the projection, not a prediction. Again, we're a ways away from doing predictions, although it is coming pretty quick. I usually do start them um, after Memorial Day, right around the 1st of June maybe. Um, but a projection, just with our formula for Syracuse, is 7-5. and five. You guys agree? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts on this team down in the comments below.